does your Astron power supply do this? Hi, right, it's Chris, K2CJB with K2CJB Radio. Welcome back to the channel. I was operating HF a couple of nights ago and my power supply started humming like that. And of course, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, why does a power supply hum? Probably because it forgot the words. Okay, that's a bad joke and it's an old joke. But anyway, um, I was tuning up the radio and then I was uh, doing some FT8 and every once in a while, this has been going on for a while, I would hear a hum, uh, a little louder hum, especially when it would transmit an FT8. I backed the power down on the radio thinking that was a problem, but it never went away. But what really concerned me was when I was operating sideband and I heard that hum loud when I was transmitting. So it's time to take a look at the power supply and see what's going on. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the output voltage of the Astron to see how that reacts with the load. This is a little meter box that I put together some time ago. The bottom meter lets me know what the AC power is that's feeding the shack. The top two DC meters look at the two DC power supplies that I use. Um, the top one is for the Astron supply and the bottom one is for an auxiliary power supply that feeds all the accessories in the shack. This little digital meter kit I got from my friends down at Quicksilver Radio, and it really is a handy little tool to have. The first thing we'll do is we will put the FTDX3000 into tune mode and see how the power supply reacts. And as we can see, the output voltage of the Astron does not change. That's a good sign. That tells me that the regulator circuit in the power supply is functioning. So now let's take a look at the AC ripple on the output of the power supply. I've got the meter connected to the output terminals right on the back of the Astron power supply. And this is the output, it's 13.6 volts. To measure ripple, we change the meter to AC mode. And we're going to see a very low ripple at this point, I would think. We can change the scale of the meter so we can get a little more of an accurate representation. So that's what we have right now. Now let's put it under load. We'll put the, the FTDX3000 into tune. Okay, we see an increase in ripple. Uh, not a whole lot, but we do see an increase in ripple and we definitely hear that hum. At this point, I suspect it's the filter capacitor in the power supply. I just kind of suspect that. Um, you know, a little more current being drawn through it. If the capacitor is breaking down, it's a good chance it might not be filtering as cleanly as it should be. I can tell you that I've owned this power supply since 1998. It was the very first thing I purchased on eBay. I bought it to run an, a Yaesu FT100. I can also tell you that this power supply, since I've had it, has been on, turned on, powered up 24 seven for pretty much the entire time. There are a few times when I moved or I might've lived somewhere or I wasn't using the power supply, but I'll tell you what, for the most part, that power supply has been turned on the entire time. So I think it's a safe bet that something like the capacitor has failed. So let's take it apart and see what we have to do. There are three screws on the top that you have to remove and I've already done that. Then you have to flip the power supply over and remove the four screws on the bottom. Before going any further, let's talk about a little safety here. This is a large filter capacitor anywhere around 100,000 microfarad. It will hold a charge for a significant amount of time. These two terminals up here are hot at this point. Even though the power supply is unplugged, there it is, it is unplugged, there is voltage charged up in this capacitor. I don't believe they've got a bleeder resistor across it. I don't remember in the schematic, but if you wanna make sure that this thing is discharged and doesn't discharge through you, do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> now it's discharged. Let's talk a little bit about this power supply. It's very simple. It's a brute force linear power supply. It's got one honkin power transformer in it that right off your line cord, right into the transformer. Out of the transformer, we go through a power rectifier circuit down on the bottom and this big filter capacitor here. This circuit board here is the regulator. It uses an LM723 regulator, a very common regulator chip. And on the back, we've got some series pass transistors also just to handle the current that's going out this is a 35 amp power supply so let's remove the capacitor now that it's safely discharged and see what's going on to remove the capacitor is very simple no soldering iron required we just remove these two screws
and we loosen this clamp. And there you go. This is a 100,000 microfarad capacitor rated at 25 volts. Um, I've had this power supply, like I said, powered up for well over 20 years, so there's a good chance this thing has failed. I looked around the Astron website and I found the replacement parts section and lo and behold, they have a page just for capacitor C5. That's the filter capacitor for this power supply. So I ordered one and here it is. Now the reason why I chose to go with Astron uh, to order it from them, this way I know it'll fit. <laughs> you know, you can order these, these parts from other places like DigiKey and places like that. You know, I, I didn't want to take any chances. I was like, you know, I'll pay a couple extra bucks, but this way I know it'll fit. To install the new capacitor, we just reverse the process. But one thing we have to absolutely make sure of, that we observe the polarity. There's the positive lug right there. That goes here. Done. I will tell you, getting this cover back on is a bit of a project. Getting everything lined up, um, <laughs> that's a bit of a project. But you know, you don't have to get inside these power supplies all that often. It's, um, it really is, in my mind, probably the best power supply on the market, a linear power supply on the market. I mean, this thing, like I said, has lasted me for many years. And the guy before me, who knows how long he used it for before I got it. So this is well over a, at least 25 year old power supply. And this is the first time I've really had a problem with it. So yeah, <laughs> capacitor C5 did not repair the power supply. Actually what it did was um, I heard a loud hum and then the power supply died. It blew the main eight amp fuse to smithereens. So we did some troubleshooting inside the power supply and found a short across the, uh, the main bridge rectifier. And now I suspect that the new capacitor has failed. Let's just take a look at the capacitor and the rectifier with just a basic DVM and see what we find. First test we'll do with the DVM. I removed the rectifiers from the power supply to make it a little easier to demonstrate this. I tested it while inside the supply, but I took it out just to confirm it. The red wire is the lead that goes to the main filter capacitor and the transformer secondary gets connected here and here. Testing a rectifier we'll do is we'll check one direction and we see that it is an open circuit and we go the other way and we do get a reading. Now we go the other way in the bridge, watch this. We have a dead short in both directions. So this rectifier has failed. I did order another set from Astron. This meter that I have here is, is very powerful. It can do quite a few other types of tests. So I'm gonna use this one on both capacitors. And um, again, we can look at the state of charging looking at the way this analog display goes. I'm gonna put the meter into manual mode so it's not auto scaling. I have it set to, I believe it's a three meg range. Let's look at the new capacitor first. And we can see, we look at that analog, that analog display, it's really not moving all that much, is it? And if I change the scale, I'll go down a little lower. We're reading about 5K, aren't we? Okay, so now if I go across the old, the original capacitor that I thought had failed, in that same range, you watch, see where that analog meter went? We're going to move it up a little bit. Now it's reading one meg, but not like the, the new one does. That same scale, we see what it's reading. So I think the original, uh, the new capacitor has failed. 
I don't know if it came that way or it happened as a result of the rectifier shorting and perhaps causing the capacitor to fail. But my guess is that the new capacitor has failed. So what I'm going to do now is install the new rectifier with the old capacitor and let's see what the power supply does. If you do this with an Astron power supply yourself, be very careful. The rectifier comes marked with positive and then AC on one side. I want you, you, you may be tricked into thinking that when you look at the way these lugs are laid out that, oh, there's three in one direction and one by itself. So when you get the one from Astron, you look at it and say, oh, there's one by itself and three facing another direction. But you'll notice you might confuse yourself with this. Looking carefully, you'll see that Astron, when they assemble these, this little bridge rectifier they put together here, they twist these lugs to make them face the right direction so that you can, you can set them up this way, wire them up this way. So be careful when you're looking at the label of the rectifier, the new one is marked the same way. That's what you wanna follow. Here's the rectifier, the new one all wired together. Um, I didn't have any 14 gauge or 12 gauge wire available, solid core wire, so I had to reuse what they what was in there. Yeah, <laughs> and it was not easy getting it apart. And I'll tell you also, it's not easy soldering this all together. Um, you've got to really flow some solder, clean up your mess, and th there's a lot of work to do there. Anyway, um, I marked the bench with the old one before I took things apart, so I would know how to wire things up, what kind of how to orient things and get the wiring to the right lengths. Don't forget the thermal grease on the bottom of the rectifiers. We've got the original capacitor reinstalled. We've got the rectifiers installed, and I'm gonna tell you that is a job. <laughs> Just if you're gonna do this, it is a job, even physically installing them back in because you're moving the power supply back and forth and with that honking transformer, it's not a, not a trivial task. But I'm plugged in, no smoke. Let's fire it up and see what happens. Okay, it's not humming like it was. Um, and uh, we've got we've got output. So I'm going to, while I have it apart, just um, touch up the metering calibration to make sure it matches what's really coming out of the power supply. And um, we'll hook it back up and put a load on it and see what happens. And it's back in its home under the desk. Powered up. I heard a radio fire up. Let's hit the, let's turn the uh, FTDX 3000 on. And we will, Hit tune and see what the radio does. I'll see what the power supply does. Quiet as a mouse. Well, looks like the power supply is fixed. It wasn't what I originally thought it was, which was interesting. Now I've got the original capacitor back in there and it's quiet. So my guess is I probably should have did, done more troubleshooting before I assumed that it was the filter capacitor. You know what they say about assuming. But I'm, I'm glad that we've got everything working. It's nice to not hear the power supply anymore and not worry about something blowing up down there. So my guess is that maybe one of the diodes in that bridge rectifier had failed and then when I changed the capacitor out, it did something else, caused the other capacitor to, to, to blow. It's probably what happened because um, it, it was dead short. So my guess is that who knows what could have happened when, that, when I put everything back together the first time. But, that said, the power supply is up and running. I will tell you, this is not a project for somebody that's a little faint of heart. The voltage levels in the primary, of course, that's line level, but the amount of current that can go through that power supply, it can hurt you. So that being said, if you choose to work on an Astron power supply, they're linear supplies, they're relatively easy to understand, um, but they can be dangerous to work on, so you've gotta be extremely careful. Also, make sure you've got a good soldering iron and soldering gun when you've got to do some work on that heavy wiring in there. So I hope this helps somebody. If you have an Astron supply that's in trouble, <laughs> you, you can fix them. And Astron's got every part you need for it, so, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but again, if this is a, a video that helped you, please consider clicking like. And also, if you enjoy uh, ham radio videos or things like this, please consider subscribing as well. You know, that, that always helps all of us YouTubers out, helps the algorithm, of course, but it also helps us, and, and I know for me, it just gives me a lot of encouragement to keep going with YouTube videos when I see likes and subs coming along. So until next time, 73 from K2CJB.